Yeah, 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 we're live. Woo, it's Wednesday. Let's do that. Yeah, that thing. Woo! Live. Boom. That's my camera. You see me. Hey. Eight oh four AM and I've turned down the volume on my headset. <laughs> so we are live, Chris Tim and Travis Terrell. It's soothing volume into my Oh head. God. Oh boy. This is gonna be a day. How is it your foot has hurt for like three days now? And you take your medicine to make it feel better after you get here. Because I had to put something on my stomach, man. Oh. Oh, and your stomach. Had What'd you eat? I had a zing zang. A zing a wop. A zing zang. Is it whatever the the uh, Bloody Mary mix? Man, whatever the uh, the the Zaxby's. thing, the hostess thing, whatever they create. Oh, what's the hostess people? What do they make? The ziggly do. Yeah, there we go. Zigazoos. Oh, what'd you call me? Huh? Ziga. Is that what you said? <laughs> a z- a zamababa boom bomb. Oh no. Uh, Travis, uh, we're we're calling this his uh, flu game. He's, it's not going to be a good one. He's it's, hurting. Oh boy, diabetes is acting up. He might have to lose a foot by the end what of the, the show. Hell? What, what kind else of could shit it be? is that? What else could it be? What? It's, there are so many other things it could be besides. Why did you have to go to that? You just said you ate a sugary treat. I to, had a, to, to put something on my stomach. A sugary treat. If St. Louis could drive, I could have stopped by and got me some Dub C. What's that? Come on, man. You've lived in this city long enough to know Dove Seed is White Castle, man. Why their, are you acting I silly? Hear Why? Co- I hear their coffee's delightful. I ain't going to lie. I may have to take a restroom break at some point in the oh, middle no. of the show. I know. You gave 140 booties to that Dub C. Hey, Chris Gardner's here. He's the stream is queen. He? Uh, and he's the executive producer of We Are Live, which is uh, filmed in front of a live studio audience. No, it's not. Why are you lying to everybody Media. today? That's right. Midcoast.media for more information. Hello, Chris. Gardner. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. He needed Good morning pills. He needed he needed a zigzaggity to line his oh, stomach. I thought you were doing a Bill Cosby impersonation for a moment. Yeah. Saying this to somebody the other day, I said sore ankles are like the sore tooth of the foot. No, you tweeted that out. I saw it. Yeah. yeah. You, when you said it to someone, you said it to the so were you, very Were you very working private... on material before you tweeted yeah, it out? Yeah, that's true. Oh, that's what Twitter is for. Yeah, that's fair. Mm. Okay. Uh, uh, hold on. Uh-oh, throw oh, it up. please. Bring it down. Please. Bring it Good down. Good morning. Ooh. Screw it over a little bit. Oh, there it is. Oh, <laughs> Throw it up. By the way, that's also a sexual move you can use on your lady. Yep. Or fella. Or fella. Just go to them one day at the end of the night. No. Nope. Hey, baby girl, you ready to get your walnut? Mm. Mm. I mean, yeah, I'll pass. Okay, well, just an option. Okay, it's Nothing there. Nothing to consider. It's there in the toolbox, I, I a, guess. You had a few Bloody Marys. Had a nice little couple shots of tequila. Uh, her the, or me? Both. Yeah, in fact, I would suggest you dip it in tequila. Walnuts. So mm. you want me mm-hmm. to have alcohol? Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm telling my mom. Oh, mom, I can't have any because it makes my belly sick. <laughs> Gardner, you don't eat uh, sweet treats to soothe your tummy? Um, <laughs> not normally. Are you Are you upset that you probably have diabetes before me? Mm. I'm not upset at all. I'm upset, I'm, I'm upset on this level. <laughs> We're I, in a race to diabetes. <laughs> I'm not upset. It just, I, I hate being injured and... I turn into a baby when I do, you do. <laughs> and I can't Let's help. I'm, n- I'm like hardly ever the... injured. This is the first physical injury I've had. I, I kid you not, in three years. Like I dislocated my patella about three years ago, and Your that's kneecap. when I was doing. Yeah, my kneecap when I was coaching. So I dislocated that. Wait, how'd you dislocate it, coaching? Well, when I excuse me, when <laughs> when I was a coaching, I dislocated my kneecap. You get on the court, you get physical with your players, and doing an up really and down a- with one of my players, uh, I dislocated my kneecap. And so really that was about attack that sideline, huh? In fact, that may have been even not even three years ago. It may be close to four. Point is, I don't get a ton of injuries, and so because you're not active. 
I'm very active, oh. uh, especially on social media. So, yeah. um, <laughs> what? That's yeah, uh, I don't think that means that's not what the same. No? Okay. Kind of thing. Fact of the matter is, it hurts like a son of a bitch, and I may take my own commercial break at some point in the middle of this show. No. Because I am not, and then the traffic this morning was just absolutely. What does it have anything to do? Here's with? what I, here's what let me explain. It's not the congestion because it's going to be rush hour traffic. That I totally understand. What really just gets under my skin is the poor driving. It's yeah. the poor and considerate driving, and the decision making just makes driving in St. Louis work. And then you couple that with roads that are being worked on, that have been worked on for almost eight months. And they're working on the same damn problem. And the thing is, they do such a shitty job that they're going to have to come back to it in another three months. It's just so frustrating right now. And my ankle absolutely is throbbing. And I want to punch a hole in, I think, where's Keckner? I'm going to punch a hole in Keckner's face. I'm so angry right now. I'm in so much pain. Please donate to my GoFundMe. Ha-ha. <laughs> What's your cash app? Oh, can I apply? Yeah, mm. get that. Pay a piece of my cash app. I think my favorite part of this whole saga is that, boy, <laughs> you've just been uh -oh. a real dickhead. Oh, Anytime oh, boy, my no, back, uh, oh, uh, no. my ankle. Oh, no. Uh, oh, no. And you haven't even been sensitive oh, to the fact that I probably boy. have early onset dementia. Oh, so oh, oh geez. There's that a lot going very... on. Uh, this is total payback. For years, I would I've absolutely. I've rolled my ankle 437 times, and he's every time, quit it, do this, just wrap it up, do this, have shit, bitch, do this. The man saw me verbatim skyrocket a football across eight parking lots at Lou Fest, wouldn't back me up on the radio, eight and then I went, lots. and then I had to go and try and prove myself in dress <laughs> shoes and tore my shoulder. <laughs> Because my fat ass is out of shape. You need to uh, stop uh, trying to prove apart. yourself, number one. I have. Oh. I don't care anymore. I've given Good. up. So the uh, the reality is this <laughs> this is <laughs> this is uh, this is karma in its finest yeah, form. Yeah, it is. And he, he in no way, shape, or form. You couldn't even be in Rambo kind of blood. Like this is <laughs> like you are such a pussy. This is a big, <laughs> big, big, big. I don't call people pussy. You're a pussy. And I don't normally agree with you, <laughs> but I concur. Rambo, I hate the sign of blood. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Rambo. Oh, it's a cut. <laughs> Rambo first cut. Mm. Like, ah! yeah. You win, officer. Paper cut. Yeah. You win. Damn I diabetes hawk always drinking all the nectar from my hummingbird. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not drinking. <laughs> Black sheep. With the diabetes hawk. Can you imagine seeing a hawk up on a hummingbird feeder? Just hey, don't big, mind me. Big oh, fat. Oh, oh, you just knock it over. <laughs> like, just, ah, I knocked it over again. That, that owl's got a small head. <laughs> it is payback. Chris is right. I feel so awful for the things I've said to him, and because of that, I would like to take no, this moment. No, no, no. You feel no. bad. No. Hey, Shane. Can I, can you, I get a you camera three? Yeah. Shane, I want a you camera three get, apology. Get, uh -uh. This is not. This is the, oh, boy. Uh, Christopher Ryan Denman. Oh, boy. You have endured so much over our time together, and I want to take this time to apologize mm. for absolutely nothing. No, I'm glad I've seen I did this before. it. I did it. I've seen I'm this glad before. I did it. So what? Ah. I'll be back on my feet in no time. He's you may have punch won this round, man. diabetes. You may have won this round, but I'll be back. Trust me, I have Twinkies in my trunk. Oh, no. You can't beat diabetes with sugar. That's not how you combat uh -oh. it? You can't suffocate it with what I feel like you just get like, Dr. you're overwhelming. You're overwhelming with more sugar. So what you do. And you offset it. Is you overdose with sugar. Oh, uh, yep. With the best and the body ever. is going all over the place. It doesn't know what to do. And it eventually adapts to a lesser sugar. So then like your normal intake of sugar, no matter what it was, your body becomes accustomed to that because it becomes the new normal. Very true. So, and so that's an interesting strategy. I think we do need to go to an antique store and buy you a cane. Oh, nice. What about uh, edibles? We've got edibles being uh, suggested to you by Lisa. Anybody got any topicals? Like any topicals I can put on my skin? The cream? To, yeah, to get rid of the inflammation. Is that what Barry Bonds use? The clear and the cream. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. Um. But I, I may at some point, because uh, this medicine isn't doing me any favors this morning, what, what, I may what sneak out to the restroom for uh, about 
25, 35 no. minutes. Oh, damn what? it. No. Can we just do the show? Can I, what, we have a bathroom here in Why the studio. Can I just do the bathroom Do you need in to the use studio? the bathroom? I'll just, go on my, I'll just go on this. I'll just go on live on air. It's no big deal. How does the it's bathroom no have anything to do with your ankle? It uh, doesn't. I'm just saying I'm not. Okay. You have to take one of those 28-minute Terrell. Hey, don't just, tell people no. I take that long. Is that what's going on? No. What, how did There's you a reason you call it a meeting. Yeah. So, I, like I said, I believe when I was uh, asleep uh, the other night that uh, I was so out of it that uh, 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 my foot was dangling off the edge of the bed. Yeah. And I think the way that it was angled, it was angled. it created a... Dangling? Yeah, it was just dangling. I don't Shane, know why. Your body? Shane Gillis uh-huh. broke in and said, hey, black man, mm-hmm. twisted his foot. Go on. And so, yeah, at some point, I don't know, somebody came in and... Uh, Put me in an ankle lock Maybe it was a while ghost. I was asleep. And it's very yeah. possible. We've been talking about a lot of ghosts around the mm-hmm. office lately. And so I, whatever happened, someone put me in an ankle lock while I was asleep. And I woke up and I felt like a crook. You know how you have a crook in your neck because you slept awkwardly? Um, is it crook? Is it a crack? Is it a crack in your neck? You said I felt like a crook. I felt like a... <laughs> you should always feel like a crook. <laughs> because society makes you feel that Nevertheless, way. Nevertheless, I think what happened is there was just a ton of stress put on the bridge of my foot, the top bridge of my foot, mm-hmm. while I slept. Were you doing any uh, hip-hop dancing or anything? I don't think I was. I wasn't... like, And that's the thing that's more frustrating right now for me is that I didn't do anything physical to cause this injury. We weren't worried about that. Oh, well, shut up. <laughs> that's like when I... I, I like partially tore a tendon in my ankle because I was wearing my my golf spikes on the parking lot, <laughs> and there was a quarter, and I stepped directly on, on the, the quarter, quarter and it, and caused it you made to slip. they called me to slip, and yeah. I rolled my ankle, and I'm like, this is rather embarrassing. And like ankle injuries are, uh, Chris, I don't know if you know anything about them. Oh my gosh, I hate you. Uh, but they they can nag, they can go on for days. <laughs> Maybe you like. Mm. How old am I? 35. So like 22 years okay, long? Okay, that's insane. I don't think that's. <laughs> Did you? That ha- it's not a high ankle sprain. That's good. Though. No, it's Those not. It was a brutal. high ankle. Not a high ankle. I wouldn't even made it into work, man. Turf toe? Have, we've you think been, it's turf toe? We've been V-mixing all day long, my friend, because oh, I can't. Good job. But I'm going to, look, I'm going to power through. If there's one thing that I'm known for mm-hmm. is oh. my reliability. And your resilience. Oh, and resilience, that, that my yeah. resilience specifically. And so, you know, I'm going to power through. If I shart my pants while I'm oh. on, st- on the show today. Do you today, need to go to the bathroom? He'll help me. No, 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 no. I'm going to power through. I think I'm gonna you're do setting th- up an excuse just to take a break. Yeah. Are you one of those guys that'll? Are you one of the? Are you one of the people that'll just go sit sit in the toilet and play a, a, a phone game and not even pull your pants down? Yeah. That would tell you I did. Like you right wouldn't now. even do the respect of like I, in I've case done we that could before. see. Yeah, I know how people say like you know those people are wasting taxpayers' money. You know, mm-hmm. especially those who work in government. But to be honest with you, I absolutely wasted your tax money because when I worked for the government, there would be times where I would go to the bathroom and I didn't even have to go and I would be in there for about an hour, hour and a half. Hour and a half? And look, on the taxpayer's dime. Well, look, that office ain't watching itself on Netflix. <laughs> and so I would sometimes go into the bathroom because I didn't want to be bothered with my coworkers. Yeah. And look, the Republicans have a super majority. Oh, here we I go. worked for a Democrat. Uh-huh. It wouldn't like it really mattered that much anyway. So I would go into the bathroom and I would, uh, from time to time, watch about two... The four how episodes many, of Lost. How many tentacles were uh, involved? There in were your no tentacles. There was no need for me to watch hentai while at work because I am a professional. He knows what it is. And but the fact of the matter is, yeah, I would absolutely knock out. You know, if, if Mama's Family was on YouTube, I would take the time to watch about two or three episodes. Mama's Who doesn't family. love Mama's Family? Good for you. Hmm. You feel good the, about that? What was the son's name on Mama's Family? Ben. Huh? Vincent or Venton? Venton? No, Venton or Venton. Venton. It began with a V. You're it began right. with a V. I want to say Venton, but I feel like I'm wrong in that. Cause I was, you're I watched, close. I feel like it's... But it's not quite it. Yeah. I know you're close, though. Ah, that's going to bug me. Yeah, it's going to bug me, too. Chris, look it up. Not Vernon. Mama's Family. Mama's Family. Cast. Mama's Family's cast. Venton. Varno. It's definitely Venton, Venton or Vincent. It's not Vent. It's not Vincent. Why am I thinking Vernon. It's not Vernon, though. Vinton. Vinton? I was right. V-I-N-T-O-N. All right. Vinton. I, I love that show. I, I absolutely love that show. I would. Uh, you want to talk about reboot? Betty reboot White that. was on that? Yeah, I think she was the sister at some point. She would make special guest appearances. I don't know if she Mama's was... Mama's Family is one of those that was just kind of on, 
at times, and I didn't really. I was more of a Jefferson's man myself. I wasn't a sellout to the honkies. I think Mama's family was on after school for me. Was it? It came on at night for me. It came on like uh, either well, like before. after high school for your old ass. Yeah, I think. So. Ran from 1983 to 1990. Chris Gardner's not that old. No, but there were reruns. There were reruns. And they would do like two or three or four in a row or something. Isn't that weird? To, like, I can't, t- probably because of Nick at Night. Um, and it felt older, too, but uh, I've seen every episode of Happy Days. Every one? Really? Probably. I mean. That's crazy. If not, most of them. Yeah. Because they would play it on Nick at Night or whatever. Right? Yeah, I would. I don't know. I don't know. Some like I really enjoyed '90s television. I was big into Empty Nest. I was big into Golden Girls. I love Mama's Family. The reruns. I love. Was Ma- Golden Girls a spinoff of Mama's Family? I feel like Mama's Family was the spinoff of something. Was it the spinoff of uh, Carol Burnett show? Mama's Family was because Carol Burnett of, uh, was also part of Mama's mm-hmm. Family. Well, Rue McClanahan was in. So I don't know. I'm not sure, but I love those shows back then. I, I was I was one of those weird kids that actually liked Mash. A lot of people say, "Oh, when Mash came on, I knew it was time to go to bed." When Mash came on, that's when the night began. I loved Mash. Now I wouldn't get through the whole episode because it would. I mean, I had to go to bed, but for the most part, I would always watch Mash as a kid. Empty Nest, eh? Empty Nest. I don't know why I was into Empty Nest. Yeah, Mama's Family uh, is a spinoff of a recurring series of sketches called The Family mm-hmm. on the Carol Burnett show. That's what I thought, yeah. Okay. You're all over Mama's Family. The sketches I love it, led man. to the made-for-TV movie Eunice, or Eunice. I don't know and if I finally the television series. Yeah, the television series is uh, off the chain. I love Mama's Family. Empty Nest, I recall one scene in particular, and I don't know why. Remember The Neighbor? Yes. I can't think of the actor's name. I can't either. Because he's been in a few other things. His name was Charlie, though. Who was the lead in Empty Nest? I forget the uh, actor's name. I can't name. remember his name either. That's so crazy. I see his face. Yeah. I see the cast, but Kinda I Kind of tall guy. Yeah. Um, but the neighbor, his name was Charlie, and he had a license plate made, and he thought he was being, being really cool, and it was like, see lover. So he was like, I'm Charlie, and I'm a lover. And then people, he would show people his new vanity plate, and they'd be like, Clover? <laughs> And that was, that's like the scene I remember from Empty Nest. <laughs> I don't know why, but anytime anyone says Empty Nest, I think of the Clover vanity plate. I don't know, something, I don't, and NBC had the shows, man, they had Alf. Who didn't love Alf? And I didn't, to this day, like, that got greenlit. And I'm happy it did. They had an alien, they lived with an alien, it was just like normal. Yeah. And then they ended on the greatest cliffhanger of all time, which they never answered. They never answered what happened to Alf. Does everyone remember the finale of Alf? Mm-mm. No. The finale of Alf is when they finally make contact with his species, oh, okay. and they, they find remember. a way to try to get him with his people, his species, yeah. and they take him to this field, and they're then surrounded by the government when they get to this field, and they get their guns out and the spotlights on Alf and the family. And that's how the series ends. That sounds. Yes. Did you dream that? Are I, you sure that's how it ends? I believe that's how. And I think they did a TV movie as their finale. I could be wrong on that one. I'm probably wrong on that one. Look that one up. But I feel like Alf ended <sighs> when the government tri- surrounded the family. And they, it looks like they were. It was, it was toast for Alf. He wouldn't oh. be able to go to space. and Because I think his... Specie, they arrived. There was this huge spotlight. You're like, oh my God, we're going to see the rest of Al's family. And then the United States government and their officials arrived. And then that was it. Did his people just take off? Then? They took off. They oh. left? They left because they was like, man, I ain't getting caught. We, we, we were trying to come swoop you through. Yeah, but they're fucking aliens. They I, can take care of the government. I don't know. I was a kid. I didn't, I didn't know how to I write an email. They're using gasoline to get here and stuff like that. Using guns? What would be fine? They got like uranium and other elements that aren't even of this world that they're using that's not i don't like the way that ends i i look it's not my fault if that's true consider me know. gone is the 24th and final episode of alf's fourth and final season only four seasons I feel that's like a thing. big impact right. alf is quite well known in seasons? pop culture yeah, four seasons that could have been 20 season uh 20 episode seasons yeah maybe uh let's see aired no because it was the 24th episode dude um let's see yeah there's a video of it alf original ending to be continued um let's see 
Wait, hang on, wait. Okay, we may have something. Oh, hang on. It was just, it was a moment in time that was very Alpha traumatic. Alpha Turns TV series finale. Okay. We're going to have to get a little Internet's more. Internet's not being uh, awesome. Okay. Here we go. One of the more memorable and unusual TV shows of the 1980s was Alf. Really, uh, busy. Uh, last episode ended in a cliffhanger with Alf being captured by the U.S. military's alien task force. As you okay. might, that's really dark. Yeah, that's what I said. As a kid, I'm like, wait, this was a comedy the entire time. What just happened? As you might expect, the producers didn't plan on ending the show this way. In that's fact, Fusco says they were planning on doing a fifth season with Alf living on a military base. He felt that the new <laughs> setting would have opened up the show to new characters and situations. Based on what we know about the show's production, it seems likely this change in cast and setting was also conceived to put an end to the four years of backstage tensions. Oh, no. God. Unfortunately, Alf was canceled and the series remains open-ended in syndication. Fusco says a... Oh, my gosh. Um, Fusco says a one-hour special was planned to wrap up the series, but there was a change in management at NBC and it never happened. That wasn't the end for the furlough. He's popped up several times over the years. His last episode appeared on an installment of him. He's in, he showed up on Blossom. Um, so we, we don't have a yeah. we don't have a conclusion. In nineteen ninety six, ABC aired a ninety minute TV movie called Project Alf. Okay, I thought I wasn't crazy. I thought okay. I wasn't crazy. I knew there was an Alf movie. The story picks up six years after the end of the TV show with Alf in government custody. None of the other series cast members returned for the movie. The Tanners are mentioned briefly when Alpha is told that they are in the witness protection program and have been relocated. The self-absorbed alien seems to have no interest in finding them. The movie <laughs> features a pre-West Wing Martin Sheen, though the drama wouldn't debut for three years at point. Characters ask another military officer if he knows when the New Hampshire primary will be held. By the end of the movie, Alpha is released and looks like he'll be annoying some young officers for a while. Okay. Oh, that's unfortunate. And then he showed up in 1999 on the episode of The Love Boat, The New Wave. Did not know that's that was a thing. bullshit. That is. Thank you. They were just like, yeah, let's keep around. Thank you. What a terrible way to end a series after milking the entire alien thing. And November then... 3rd, 2000, the Cindy Margolis show? Who's Cindy Margolis? She was a Cindy model, Margolis. wasn't she? Oh, yeah. Thank Alf you. stopped by for a visit. The dance party show only lasted a few more episodes. Jesus. In 2002, they just keep using him. Okay. All so right. so what shows? we're saying is we're going to have to write a fitting finale for Alf. That's our assignment? That's our assignment. That what we're going to take on yeah. here at We Are Live? I, mean, I think that's a challenge I think we're up to. We need to write a proper finale to Alf. Mm -hmm. I like this where he, like... What if, what if that was like the M.O. of the NBC president where you're just like, why did uh, Kevin on The Office bring in Alf to uh, one, like the, an all-new NBC series? They have to write one episode where Alf shows up. I like that. That's uh, that Parks Recreation, funny. you know, him and Swanson going oh, back yeah, and I love forth. for the folks yeah. at The Good Place to find a way to squeeze in Alf. Alf. If they can do okay. that, that would be pretty funny. In their final season. Yes, in their final season. <laughs> why the hell not squeeze in a little bit of Alf? See, I knew I wasn't what if, crazy. What if we have Alf die? Well, they might as well. They were, <laughs> but he gets eaten by a cat. Okay, that would be. Yeah. Well, he be. eats cats. He eats cats, and then to turn around and have a cat eat him. I that mean, because this, this is a problem. Right. Fancy How are you going to sell this to kids? Kids yeah. are going to want to watch this with Alf involved, yeah. and then they're going to be like, "Why does he eat our cat?" Oh, that's a good point. Uh, Jamie Moyer's Fancy Foyer says he eats more cat than Alf. Oh, I don't Jesus know what that Christ. means. Oh, that's a good rap line. That's a good bar. <laughs> That's a good. That's a good I, bar. I eat more take cat a, than take Alf. Take your girl to outer space. Because <laughs> I, I eat, eat more, more cat, cat than Alf. Alf. <laughs> Write that down, man. Uh, Write that down. No, that is copyrighted. Man. We just stole it from a listener. Mm -mm. You said it on our show. It's officially ours. Take take what to outer space? I'll take your girl your to girl. outer space. Take your girl to outer space. Why do you have to Come talk like that? Put that ass on the case. Sit on this face. Mm -hmm. and when you sit on this face, more cat than Alf. Cat than Alf. There you go. All right. Well, that'll do it. We'll wrap up the show today. <laughs> hey, we've got a melee today. Speaking of old TV shows, yeah. uh, Gardner, what's the melee? Well, uh, apparently there's a reboot coming to... What's this? The Peacock? Is it called The Peacock, Travis? It is called The Peacock. This is the new streaming service uh, by NBC. Yeah. This is NBC's streaming uh -huh. service. I can't keep yeah. up with... Uh, 
Which streaming service? I'm going to be honest. Mobile? I'm not sure either. I thought they were. So I think this is. I mean, because we got. Yeah, so that's what we have. We have Netflix, Hulu, oh Prime God. Video, Disney Plus, CBS All Access, HBO Max, Showtime, Stars TV, Apple TV Plus, Sling, Peacock, and I feel this, like there's one. And there's there's more. more. There's more. That almost yeah. that almost looks like the menu <laughs> to a cable company. How strange is that? Mm -hmm. Except you could get all these all this programming for hundred dollars a month instead of what. 30, 60, 30 bucks a piece <laughs> once you kind of get down? I mean, not all of them. I that, know but. that you can bundle Disney and Hulu. Netflix has been hovering. What is Netflix now? Thirteen ninety nine a month. We're going to need it. Right somebody needs to make a chart. Yeah, mm -hmm. someone, someone actually <laughs> yeah. did. Someone online actually broke okay. down and had a pricing chart of every single one of these rollouts. There needs to be uh, a chart. I don't, I don't know. I, don't, I did not dive deep into the Peacock. That apparently mm -hmm. is now the new streaming service from NBC. So I don't know what they're going to be charging. Um, but I know Peacock and HBO Max are owned by the same company. I think that's Warner Media. I know you might not know what uh, Peacock is going to be charging, but we do know a little bit about what they're going to be showing. Oh, do we ever, man? They have a reboot. Of what? Saved by the Bell. Absolutely. And it's a beautiful premise. This is going to be very interesting. So apparently, according to the log line, Zach Morris is the governor of California, and apparently he's getting some bad PR for closing some schools in low-income areas, and his solution is to now start to send those kids to more wealthier schools mm -hmm. like Bayside. And apparently Elizabeth Berkeley and um, A.C. Slater, a.k.a. Mario Lopez. Took me a second. I have to remember what his real name I was in tell. real life. Mario Lopez, are they're attached to come back to the project. Um, so what capacity? Is there going to be a pool scene with Elizabeth Berkeley? How? Oh, God, we can't have that. Is, is Elizabeth Berkeley the most excited about this reboot? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> She's probably the one that was probably yeah. in the, or please make this is Elizabeth, happen. Is it Elizabeth Berkeley or her husband? <laughs> I see what you did there. The most excited. <laughs> I'm so excited. Well, that's part of the poll. Ah! That's part of the poll question, yep. actually. The oh, poll really? question. The melee. Are you cool with the Save by the Bell reboot featuring Zach Morris as governor of California? Yes, I'm so excited. <laughs> or no. Those are your two options. That's your melee. I, I think this will be. I, I've said this. If you're going to do a reboot, then this is how you should do it. Do a complete reimagination. You can still have the same themes. And bring back, of course, the old cast, but, you know, do a different iteration of the storyline. I like the idea of Zach being an out-of-touch <laughs> governor of California, mm -hmm. and his solution is ultimately to send poor kids to the very rich Bayside High. I think that's funny. I think that's, and that may, that means you're going to have more characters, you're, fun storylines to dive into, and some, there are, I get the case against reboots. I get it. Um, especially as a person who <laughs> attempts to create original ideas to pitch to networks and studios. At the same time, you know there's a built-in audience, and there is a really cool way you can put a spin in it. I saw, yeah, 90210 did it recently, and I, I thought it was good. I think you do have to be sensitive to it, though. True. Like you are you're reading yesterday online about, I can't even remember who was making the comments about someone coyly mentioning some, I don't know, rich, powerful people wanting to in the industry maybe redo Pr princess bride oh that got a lot of people up in arms and that's not that's not one you touch like even carrie ellis was like hey let's not go after perfect movies this uh, is good as it is i or I, and then one person tweeted and i can't remember who inconceivable <laughs> that's good mm. that's solid i yeah they i have classics like old school uh <clears throat> I, I, no, that, old that, school could have turned into The Hangover, really. Yeah, that you, that you just do sequels. Yeah, yeah. TV That's what shows. I'm saying. Yeah, it's yeah. I agree. I think TV shows, I'm more willing to give you rope, but movies like that, I I would rather you not touch. I'm still on the fence. While I'm excited about the cast and I'm happy that he's 100% aboard, um, the Coming to America sequel has me very nervous. 
it has me very i'm more nervous about this sequel than i was about yeah. the premiere of black panther i i just really because com, coming to america is the movie for me me personally as far as when you talk about comedy when you talk about a cast you talk about direction and writing like that's it for me so the idea that you would put a sequel to it is really bothering the princess Right, that just seems like that. Just I don't know. Yeah, I'm not. Doesn't, it doesn't make me. It does not. It does I'm not. Still waiting well. on my Wings reboot. Mm. I want the television show Wings back. There's also that talk guy is through supposedly the supposedly a, a huge douche. Which one? Um, Tim Mole? Daly. Which damn it? Which one? Uh, I heard Tim Daly's such a nice gentleman. I don't know. I can Tim one of the brothers or the mechanic? One of the brothers. No, no, no. The oh. Mechanic. Lowell. <laughs> Lowell's a mechanic. He's That's great. Thomas Hayden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tony yeah, Shalhoub yeah. was in that cast, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Shout out to Michael Gaines and his love for Monk. Mm. So, uh, no, it's not Tim Daly. Stephen Weber. Okay. Supposedly. Stephen Weber. Okay. Supposedly. Oh, I haven't seen Stephen Weber in a while. He's haven't on an episode of Psych. Is he? Yes. Tim Daly, of course, is on one of my other favorite shows currently, Madam Secretary. Oh. With Tia Leone, who I, of course, have a inc- huge crush on. Yeah, oh, that's a that. fine white woman. I didn't realize... Frasier was in Wings? Well, oh, uh, the, the Wings is in Seattle, right? Was it Wings in Seattle? No, Wings is on, like, uh, Nantucket. Oh, so that would make sense if he if Frasier, because he was in Cheers. George in Went. Boston. George Went was in it? Oh, so that would yeah. make sense, so they'd be in Boston. So, yeah, so, yeah, to have Frasier on there would make sense. Let's see if Roy is still alive from Wings. That's a key <laughs> character there. You need a good Roy. Roy I love the record on TV. Memory lane today. Well, let's see. Uh, oh, what was it for you? Uh, David, Tr- uh, I, that guy can't be alive. So. What was the show for you growing up that I had to watch it? And, and when I say have to watch it, you literally had to, otherwise you're going to completely miss it because we didn't have DVR and see, I love DVDs. Wings. You were big into Wings. You would be. Now, I mentioned before, the only show my family and I would sit down together to watch was Married with Children. Okay. That was our family. That was your show. appointment family television. Yes. What was your appointment family television growing up? Married what was with it children. You? Married with children. Simpsons, really? Uh, yeah, Simpsons uh, were big in the household. Now my dad watches Hallmark Channel because Quantum Leap. Won't. Quantum Leap. Yeah, we Quantum were a Leap. big Actually, Quantum you know Leap what? family. For me, MacGyver. MacGyver. We're a big MacGyver fan. See now, I love see, now, MacGyver. see now. That's back in the day. I understood why CBS was the highest ranking television network because they had all the good stuff. Because they had Heat of the Night. They had MacGyver. They had Star Trek: The Next Generation. We that was family appointment television. There, okay. We sorry. love us some John Luke Picard in my household. I gotta, I gotta go back to this. So, do you know Smash, the radio personality from here in St. Louis? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I worked with him. Okay, what's his real name? Do you uh, know it? It's in my phone. I just found it. Asher Ben Ruby. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay, so I thought this was the case, but then I saw the guy's name, and it wasn't Smash. It was his last name. His son was on Wings. His son is well, was an son, actor who yeah. was super busy he during the 90s. He was in ER. Yeah. Who was his son? You would know him. I, it's, it's, uh, his He's name a b- is, bigger uh, guy with a beard. Abraham Ben Ruby. Kind of curly you, hair. Uh, you've, you've seen him in nine million things. Yeah. Parker Lewis Can't Lose, ER, The Program. He was in pro- The Program. Um, here, look at this. Yeah, you his know son him. is I know a you know him. pretty accomplished actor. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's been in He's everything. In yeah. nine million things. That's his son? Yeah. Yeah, he's been in everything. He was in ER for like eight seasons, yeah. nine seasons forever. That's what I'm saying. The, yeah, that is so awesome. I thought that. I was like, isn't that Smash's son? I had that is cool. That was that. his son? That is awesome. Yeah. Still is. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Idiot. <laughs> Yes. Oh my goodness, you guys are taking me down memory lane. I you love. You think your dad son. does that? Like, yeah, what? my son does a podcast. Uh, like <laughs> other accomplishments, I have. I have some others under my belt. He probably uh, brags about. Oh, you think? I hope. Hmm. Hope he doesn't start with the podcast. <laughs> hope that's the last thing. Yeah, because you don't. <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so Zach's governor. Will they still do the thing where he stops and talks to the camera while everyone else freezes? Yes. So this could be a House of Cards prequel. This could be. That would be oh. pretty funny. That would be good. I actually, if we go down memory lane, I did a random poll the other night on uh, on my own Twitter account, wondering if we'll ever see microfish in movies again. You know, microfish. Mm-hmm. You know, like when a journalist or a detective, like in an older movie, mm-hmm. is researching, and they go to like the library, but to and look at old the... articles, they have to. Oh, okay. So that's using microfish. Okay. And I was thinking, I'm like, man, with movies set in today, like 
there's no mic. There's never going to be a microfish investigation again. That's true. And it kind of made me a little melancholy. And I'm like, so it, you'd have to set the movie basically back. But my <laughs> thought was this: is that maybe something internet goes down, technology goes down, and let's say, for example, National Treasure Three. Oh, I knew he was. He was Nicholas warming up Cage for has to use microfish to make a few <laughs> discoveries. I just want to see a microfish scene in a movie again. I just. I don't want to let it go quite yet safe. with so the way technology It was is. like uh, it was a very quick exposi- exposition for you to get to one part of the story to the next. Yeah. And micro- yeah, I can see it now. Mm-hmm. That would absolutely work. That's how it works. Uh, guys, we've got comedy tomorrow night. You know what? It's free, Travis. It's well, Chris, a I, I've been going to sad hours. Can I go to a place that's a little bit happier? Oh, wow. This is the happiest hour. What? Right. Uh, and it's more than an hour. That's right. Special start at 4 p.m. We've got Jack Daniels. They're our partner in this. Sophie's oh, this Chris, week. but I want to laugh. I don't just want to drink. I bet you don't like diverse uh, lineups, do you? What kind of lineups? Are you talking about a police lineup? Nope. Well, a baseball I mean, lineup? Yeah, maybe eh, sometimes. Uh, let's, uh, let's talk about this. How about uh, Justin Luke, Charlie Winfrey, Larry Green? He's the champ champ. What does that mean? Two times. Mm-hmm. Helium. Funny bone. Same year. And Angela Smith is going to close it out. That's right. Come see some great free comedy tomorrow. And big shout out to our uh, partner this week, our featured partner. Huh. On God Arts Hotel. You been there yet, Travis? I have not, Chris, because I am what the kids call poor. Well, you should check it out. They've got a great view. They have a wonderful, wonderful rooms. Uh, had one of our friends stay there. Uh, Schlafly specials as well. At uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. That was know that's something don't you know need to do. Uh, on God Arts Hotel. Holy new hospitality experience that uh, embraces visual arts, performance, fashion, literature, and gastronomy. The hotel features 146 Artfully designed guest rooms and 25 extended stay rooms with kitchenettes located right here. There are neighbors in the Grand Center Arts District. Hotel conveniently accessible to theater, music, galleries, restaurants, nightlife, and comedy. Thursday, that's right. So check it out if you have some friends coming in town. Tell them to check out On God Arts Hotel online. I've seen some great pictures from their rooftop. Oh, yeah. yeah. They uh, do people have some shown, there, shown some great pictures. So I need to check it out. Yeah. Um, can I show you a tweet I saw this morning? Please. Yeah. And tell me if you've ever heard this before. Okay? okay? I just saw this randomly this morning. We have a request to remind me that. How old were you when you realized Seal's Kiss by a Rose was about cocaine? I saw this tweet the other day as well, and I call bullshit. 35? Because I didn't know that. I don't. It's not about cocaine. No way. Did you look at the lyrics? I have not. Can we pull the lyrics up, Chris? Let's pull the lyrics up to Kiss by a Rose. By the way, one of the greatest songs of all time. It's got to be in your top 10. I don't care who you are and what kind of genre you love. If Kiss by a Rose is in your top 10, you don't know music. Is it Kiss by a Rose or Kiss from a Rose? I can't. Uh, I don't know. From a Rose. I don't. I feel like. Kiss from a rose. I there feel like that's a gray... bullshit. I feel like you can say almost every song is about cocaine. If we're being honest, in the but, '80s for sure. But that yeah. wasn't an '80s song. That was a mid '90s, late '90s song. And so I refuse to believe that they squeezed in a song about cocaine into a here's, Batman. Franchise. Here's the opening opening lyrics. Okay, okay. You ready? Okay. There used to be a grain tower alone on the sea. You became the light on the dark side of me. Love remained a drug that's the high and not the pill. But did you know that when it snows, my eyes become large and the light that you shine can be seen? Baby, you're fucking getting nope. about to get some rose on your grave. Ooh, the more I get of you, a stranger, it feels, yeah. Now that the rose is a bloom. The life in the eyes and Okay, now a little later on. Okay. There is so much a man can tell you, so much he can say. You remain my power, my pleasure, pleasure my, my pain. pain. To me, you're like a growing addiction that I can't deny. Won't you tell me, is that healthy, baby? Hmm. But did, did you, you know, know that when, when it snows... Not. My eyes Just become because you large say snows like and that the light mean. that you shine. 
Can See, the seen. fact that he acknowledges drug and addiction in the song makes me think that it isn't about cocaine. I think he's comparing, obvious. yes, and I think he's comparing her, the woman, her love as a drug that he's addicted to. I don't know. It's I'm, I'm, I feel like it's too on the nose to be about oh, cocaine. Oh. oh, shit. Oh. Damn it. I see. Hmm. I'm not really. I, I can see the. Can I, but I, I call bullshit. No now, way. Now, Seal has not talked about these lyrics publicly. He correct? has not. Now, that makes me question things. I, I think Seal would be one of the very first artists. And I think he may come out with a statement if that continues to go viral. I think he's going to come out with a statement sometime this week. Where he says, y'all so full of shit. Well, there you go. Well, but that would be helpful, though. That would be helpful, but I don't think it's about that. I would like to know from Seal himself. I can see why you mm -hmm. would make the connection, but I think that it's... Why do you care what Seal thinks? I don't know. I don't know. Oh, it's so nothing really matters anymore. I, so. you, you really do love that song? That's, it's that, uh, not that's a great song. Maybe, song. maybe it's just because it was on MTV or MTV2 or something all the time. When I, I get like... I can't deal with that song. I think I've heard it, or it's been on in too it's many places. One of places. the greatest songs ever. Ugh, I don't goodness. know if there's a Rotten Tomatoes for songs, but it would have to be a 98, 99 percent. Mm -mm. Like that song is loved by everyone. It's a great karaoke song, by the way. It really gets the crowd going. Do you have you sung it before? I have. I have sung. That's one of my top five karaoke songs. Cause it's a great one? song. Oh, I think what it has it? to be No Scrubs TLC. Okay. What else you got in there in your top five, you think? I definitely do. do you want, uh, there's a game and you want to win, say, an Arcade Fire song. Yeah, Arcade Fire. No, it's not a game. Okay. You, can, you pick what you want. You oh, be you. Okay. Uh, well, you, you think about that, and I'll, uh, I'll tell people about Gateway Powder Coating. They're our friends. They help people out in the Midwest with powder coating because they're the number one resource for powder coating in the Midwest. Fast, durable, affordable. Travis, uh, when you're kissing that smoker outside, when you're mm. grilling and working on the meats, you want it to look good, you can take it to Gateway Powder Coating. If you've got outdoor furniture, that's right, metal furniture that needs touched up, Gateway Powder Coating. Out in O'Fallon, it's God's country. Take it to them, gatewaypowdercoat.com for more information. I saw uh, Rennie not tweeting yesterday that he went and had uh, a burger at Burkemper's in O'Fallon and that they were closing their doors after a number of years. And I pointed out to him, Burkemper's is where the kids used to gather for fights after <laughs> middle school in their parking lot. How'd that go? I never was involved in one of the skirmishes. Mm. I only had observed. Um, but it was always, I don't know how many times I heard in the hallway, Meet me at Burr Campers after school. That's pretty serious. That's it was just across the street. They were normally closed by then after school because it was a bre like a diner. Mm -hmm. um, I, th I think that was the case. But they would they would shut earlier, but kind of made me a little sad. Yeah, that is too bad. Did they have a good burger? Good fight spot. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, I mean it's a it's a classic diner. It yeah. was. I guess yesterday was their last day of eating there. Uh, we've got a little bit of time before we take a break. Kendra Jones will join us mm -hmm. next hour. She'll be uh, playing uh, Dogs on Film in place of Dr. Ed from Hillside Animal Hospital. Uh, huge news for Chris Gardner, everybody. Uh-oh. Mm -hmm. And uh, to borrow from a uh, 1999 hit song, Aliens Exist, my mm -hmm. friends. Look out. Yesterday, <laughs> that's Tom DeLong, Travis. Do you see this? No. He is a he was a one time uh, co founder not one time he's a co founder of Blink One Eighty Two and Band of Horses right no that wasn't, him. That wasn't he, didn't. he has his own he I has his own project he okay. has his own projects uh, there was a uh, boxcar racer which is really weird because it was uh, just like everybody but Travis from Blink One Eighty Two in rude. it and then uh, he did Angels and Airwaves uh, mm -hmm. but Tom DeLonge has been do, are you are you familiar with what he's been doing. I uh, know he's, he's been dumping been. money into <laughs> into research for UFOs and rockets and all this crazy stuff. Navy acknowledges. Are you ready for this? Yeah. The United States Navy acknowledges that UFO videos shared by Tom DeLonge contain unidentified aerial phenomena. Ancient astronaut theorists say yes. Navy's statement Tuesday marks the first time the objects shown in previously released videos have been officially acknowledged by the military organization. Hmm. All I have to say is, my yad <laughs> is about to explode. This is wild. Travis, 
You okay, Trev? Lil Wayne didn't do any research to uh, no. find an alien. How much pot is everybody smoking right now? No one the is Navy acknowledged pot. it. <laughs> We're getting this closer. This is as real as it now, gets. Now, they're not saying aliens necessarily, but they're getting yeah. closer to... Igno- I mean, they've obviously now acknowledged, we don't know. Where they've come up with bullshit excuses before, right? And that the, where we obviously to the fact saw that they're bullshit. pinned that they would call it unidentified. Yes. <laughs> so they at least are to the point where okay, we don't know certain things, and we're gonna let you know that. And so I mean, we're inching closer here, fellas. We are inching closer, ultimately to first contact, public first contact. And probably our demise as well. Oh, there's demise coupled with this? Well, we, we don't deserve this oh, okay. planet. Got it. Okay. I said it before. David Bowie. Got to yeah. quote him. Yeah. Homo sapiens have outgrown their use. Yeah, yeah, I don't deserve it. I deserve this planet. I work my ass No, off you're entitled. No, I am very entitled. I bust my ass for this planet. Black oval aircraft. And one of the pilots in the video, you can hear him say, my gosh, they're all going against the wind. The wind's 120 knots out of the west when the pilot then says, look at that thing. So it's, uh, there is video on this. See, this, this is what I get with you know people um, don't get when we talk about, I'm going to tie in some climate change here for a minute. When we talk about fossil fuels and like, oh, no, we can't, we can't get. Do you degrees. think aliens are flying with gasoline and jet fuel? No, they're probably using cleaner energy and more powerful energy. Why should we not want that ourselves? Maybe they are us. What do you think about that? Are we talking about multiverses here? Are they're we talking us. about they're string coming back. theory? They're coming back to see us. I think this is a brilliant strategy. By who? From the Trump administration. <laughs> this is care. Tom DeLong, baby. No, this is brilliant. This is the Donald Trump has acknowledged that he believes the only way to unite the country and the world is to unite it against an alien force. Because he said that, or I've said that. No, you probably have said it. I get I've you, said I get you, I get you too confused from yeah. time to time. I, I, said in many no, films. I believe that. So I, I am not willing. That's why you have to be, you have to be cognizant of false flags. You got to watch out for a false flag. I, I think, I, I call bullshit on this. Sorry, United States Navy. The bullshit. United States Navy. I call bullshit. You're gonna do, do this to the Navy. Sorry. The people that wait till Mikhail gets a hold of you. The I'm people just... that we're going to employ, to drop ice. Into the water yes, when hurricanes That's very true. come racing towards our country. You're going to talk about our navy that way. I think. I think one. We better hope it's it's aliens because if China or Russia mm-hmm. has developed an aircraft that we can't properly identify, well, we're in trouble. So Nazis, I think we better hope the Nazis were working on it. The Nazis got close. I think. I'm just saying that we need to really hope. That we identify this bad boy. I think the Nazis even were trying to get close when they were in Argentina. To what? To some uh, higher level technology, flying wise. They were working on it. There's some evidence in Argentina that that was occurring. What is from your, what I've seen? What is your percentage? They had. They, well, they might have had help too. They what, might have what, had help. What is your percentage as far as the, as alien life, uh, an alien species? existing outside of ours where would you put okay. that percentage no i'm going to ask a, a question to you before okay. i answer are you saying within the confines of this universe or can i go with string theory on a multiverse theory let's keep it within our universe i i'll say i'm pretty confident even within this universe just as co- how vast it is sure where are they living? but, is but it, part of just... it part of what i believe me personally is that with a multiverse mm-hmm. theory that the laws of our physics as they are in this universe might not apply or the same to other universes. Elements could be different. Um, gravity or whatever that, whatever that might be in another universe could be something different. And so they might have better stuff than us for a lot better lack of a word. Check the microfiche. There are plenty of alien uh-huh. reports throughout history. Uh huh. Now that that is where you use microfiche, is looking at old old newspaper articles. I was aliens. listening to an interview with Dan Aykroyd. Did you know Dan Aykroyd is yeah deep in your world? Yeah, we're talking Bigfoot and I elbowed him. Ghost St. Patrick's Day. 
Oh, that's right. Bigfoot, yeah. ghosts, oh, yeah. aliens. I mean, dead serious about it. Very interesting. Yeah. Has had experiences himself. I'm aware. Okay. Well, Dan Aykroyd going in on He knows the, his vodka. You know how it's in that crystal, crystal skull? skull? Yeah. Do you, are you aware of the crystal skull theory? Well, we've seen Indiana Jones. I haven't seen which that. Which was, uh, that last one was, was, a, was an shit. abomination, it right? It was shit. But are you aware of all that? Yes. That the star people allegedly I'm aware the gave star those people. to Native Americans, Indigo people in children, South America, a, yeah. Asia. Yeah. Star people in the crystal skulls. There's a reason you can harness power. <laughs> well, There's that'll a do reason it for these the first are kind of Stop looking at us like that, Travis. What? Hey, what? Um, Open up your mind and think. What? The, Stop what's being the such a narrow-minded woke bully. Oh, what's the equivalent to one of the dudes from my favorite teenage band to you? Like, who? So he literally quit Blink One Eighty Two to fund and invest and be part of making contact and doing this stuff with his Star Academy or, or whatever. I else think it's one thing we've seen. No, but who who would be who would be your equivalent to that? Would it be? I mean, who, would it be Master P? How is Master P? What has he done? What is he? I, I don't understand. Like, I don't understand uh, the question. If, if okay. Blink, if Tom DeLonge is he quit Blink One Eighty Two? They were right. my favorite band in high school. Right. Right. So, who would be your version of Tom DeLonge if he quit music to pursue space? We'll just think, say Master I P. I don't think we have one. No, I, you don't. No, I'm saying what, who's the who would, equivalent? Who would be the equivalent of that? Yeah. I guess you could say uh, Michael Jackson. Well, he would touch the aliens. Oh, yeah, or he would say he, he would was touched their, by aliens. He would look at there. So that would be the, probably the closest, but I don't I don't know. I'll uh, go seal. Seal. <laughs> there you go. That's a great way to end the hour. I want to thank Tech Electronics for being a part of the show. You know how they're part of the show? They helped us outfit this wonderful studio. Check out their website online, techelectronics.com. Several locations throughout the Midwest. They have hiring. They have hi- they're hiring for careers right now as well. You can check that out on the website. They've got amazing capabilities, and they'll help you just like they helped us. We're going to take a quick break. Back on the other side with Hillside Animal Hospitals, Dogs on Film, with our friend Kendra Jones stopping by. Quick break. We'll be right back.